Hawkeye just concluded its finale after six episodes. It felt like it was kind of quick, but a lot of the MCU Disney Plus shows really are. And I thought that Hawkeye was actually really good. But how does it stack up against the rest of the MCU Disney Plus series? We got five this year. First, it was WandaVision, then Falcon and the Winter Soldier, followed up by Loki. Then it was What If? And then, of course, Hawkeye. Five down and many, many more to go as next year alone, it looks like we're going to get a bunch. I think that Marvel Studios has big plans with the Disney Plus shows, rightfully so. I think it's a really good idea because it gives them a chance to tell good stories. You know, they don't have to make big blockbuster movies for these characters. I decided to give you guys my ranking of the five shows this year. Well, it's all my opinion and I had a hard time writing this list, like really, because I like all of them in their own right, you know what I mean? And whatever's gonna be at number five, I don't necessarily dislike. I, I just had to put something down there. So here we go, guys. Here's my ranking of all five 2021 MCU Disney Plus shows, ranked worst to best. All right, so at the bottom of the list, what if? I like what if a lot. I think that there's a lot of really fun stories, really cool scenarios, awesome use of the multiverse. And it may or may not be a required viewing now that we see an evil Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness trailer. But what if compared to the other shows, I think is just a, it's a what if, it's a hypothetical story. It's not part of the main MCU narrative. I mean, it, 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 it is, but like, we're talking about the main universe and all of the shows and the films are connected in this one storyline. And what if branches out, it does something fun, it does something different. It does a good job at doing that. But I think that even after watching all the episodes and really enjoying the finale and stuff, I didn't care enough because I know that it's all different universes and timelines and stuff. Whereas the rest of the shows, they're about specific characters in their specific moments that I know feel like are gonna be something that I'm gonna care a little more about in the future. There's no flack on the animation. The choice to do an animated series is unique and I don't mind that, but uh, it, it feels like a, a little off compared to watching the live action shows. It's just unique, it's fresh, it's fun. I, I, I think What If is, is something that you should watch if you're following the MCU, but in my opinion, it, it feels like if it didn't happen, it wouldn't be, I wouldn't really, I don't wanna say I wouldn't care, but it just feels like the other shows matter more to me. And I, I think, I hope you can understand where I'm coming from. So that's why What If falls to the bottom. It's a lot of fun, a lot of cool scenarios of characters doing different things and experiencing different lives. Some were really awesome in there. Doctor Strange as a character really stood out in that series, but just uh, it's gotta be at the bottom. Someone's gotta be at the bottom, right? And then uh, coming in number four, uh, it, it, again, it feels like I'm, it hurts to say it's low, but there's only five options. Falcon and the Winter Soldier had some really good stuff in there. I think that the um, political choices going into the Black Lives Matter and um, you know current issues culturally and stuff uh, was not a bad choice. I, I'm not saying that I don't want my TV shows to go into uh, that kind of stuff. Do, do they need to? I, I don't know, maybe, maybe not, but I think that worked. I think that Sam and Bucky have a great chemistry. I love these characters in the films that they're in, you know, the Captain America films. Seeing them as a, a duo wow, was really fun. I really enjoyed uh, both of them, you know, good on-screen presence. I think John Walker was honestly really good. Possibly my favorite part of the show. I love what they did with him. I love how he's just very, uh, you know, dark and willing to do bad things for his cause, even though he's not a bad guy per se. He's trying to be a hero, but he's he's a bit of a, you know, of an anti-hero, I guess. Um, and I think John Walker was probably my, like I said, my favorite part of the show. I, I didn't really love the, the villains that much. I think that the Flag Smashers, uh, they didn't really deliver as much as like in theory that they could have. Um, the, the main highlights of Falcon and the Winter Soldier were Sam and Bucky's dynamic. It was Sam taking on the role of Captain America and showing that an African-American is going to have a harder time um, being accepted in that role, especially after, uh, you know, many years of seeing superheroes as white. You know what I mean? And I think that they, they wrote that well. I, I liked it. John Walker was good. Uh, I didn't actually really care to to see Sharon was like the power broker. I, I, I actually just didn't care so much for that really. Uh, Zemo being in there was fun. Overall, Falcon and the Winter Soldier was, uh, was good. I actually thought that the story was really good. 
it felt like a Captain America film, rightfully so. And uh, I'm excited to see where they go with these characters um, in the eventual Captain America 4, where Sam Wilson is Cap. And uh, I, I just um, would have put it higher if it didn't feel a little bit rushed in the end and it didn't like miss the mark on some of the villains, you know? But overall, it was, it was really solid. And then coming in at number three, uh, while I think that it, it might be the most important MCU show, uh, in, in a way, possibly, I, I don't think that um, I'm going to put it at any higher as right in the middle as Loki. I think that Loki is, in many ways, it is the best. Like objectively, it's got really interesting stuff going on. It's a really cool story. It's got really good visuals and cinematics and the score and uh, it's very stylish. It's very different. It, it strays away from doing what you'd expect, especially because like it's a story about Loki, right? Loki, a great villain, a great Asgardian character. But like this story has got nothing really to do with the with Asgard or him, you know, and his ruling. It's this was a really cool and different way to take a little event that happened in Endgame where he, you know, where, where that version of him escaped. Um, and suddenly we find out about this whole grand thing going on with the TVA where timelines are supposed to be not tampered with. There are certain moments that are always supposed to happen. We're starting to really see this come as part of the storyline in the MCU. Spider-Man No Way Home just came out and uh, I won't talk any spoilers about that film in this, but obviously that's to do with the multiverse and Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness is coming out in a few months. I think it uh, it's coming out in May and Doctor Strange 2 is going to be focusing on the multiverse, quite literally as the title says. Well, WandaVision also started to uh, dive into this a little bit. Loki was all about it and it was a little confusing. It definitely feels like a little bit of a heavier viewing than the other MCU shows on Disney Plus, you know, especially uh, something like Falcon and the Winter Soldier or Hawkeye, which are a little more straightforward, I think. But uh, I, I think Loki was a really cool show. I think it was, it had me thinking a little bit. It had me really excited for the future. Um, Jonathan Majors showed up as He Who Remains, right? And we know that he was cast as Kang the Conqueror for Ant-Man 3, right? So it, it had me really excited and it had a lot of people talking. It's quite interesting to see that the multiverse, it, it, something's going on in there and things are happening that are not supposed to. Kang knows it all and it's really, it was really fun. I, I really enjoyed his presence, that actor's presence in this role. Although I know that the Kang we're eventually gonna get, uh, presumably will be a lot more menacing and uh, I, I don't know, a little different than he who remains, but um, there's a lot of concepts that, you know, a lot to take in in Loki. I think it's a well-executed show that dares to be different. Loki and Sylvie have a good bond. I, I enjoyed them together. There was a lot of fun to be had in this show as well, but it was a little more uh, darker and a little more serious. And like I said, kind of had me thinking and I'm all for that. I think that it was a very cool take on an MCU story and something fresh. And they gave Loki a chance to star in his own show, but it wasn't like, it didn't feel like it was really so similar to the Thor trilogy or to the Avengers, right? So I'm glad they did it. I think that it's not as fun in some ways as some of the other shows that came out on Disney Plus this year for the MCU. Loki, it's important and it's got me very curious to see what what's next. Like, where are they going with this? Uh, um, it's a really cool, interesting show. And I think it's fair to, for me personally to put it kind of right in the middle of this list. I liked it a lot. I like a lot of the stuff they're going for, but I think the next two shows, you'll see why I just enjoyed them a little more. Okay, so uh, coming in at number two in this list uh, here, I was a little conflicted, right? Because I thought that maybe WandaVision was going to be number one, but it's gonna be number two. You, I'll tell you about number one, obviously, in a couple minutes, but uh, WandaVision, I thought was very, very fresh, very fun breath of fresh air. We went into 2021 after having not seen anything in the MCU in 2020 thanks to COVID, right? And it was like so weird seeing a trailer for a show starring Paul Bettany as Vision and Elizabeth Olsen as the Scarlet Witch or, you know, Wanda Maximoff from the MCU in a sitcom. Like, it was so weird. But these actors had really good chemistry in the films like in Age of Ultron, Civil War, you know, Infinity War. So it, it made sense to give them a show together. I feel like it was definitely a fitting chance for these characters to shine again and uh, to be their main roles. The show ended up delivering a really fun time. I think that the first half of the show being different generational sitcoms was so strange, but awesome, like delightful. I really got a good laugh. I got a lot of fun out of it. My mom almost felt like nostalgic to like the older sitcoms that she watched with her mom and stuff. And like, it was definitely a fun way to explore what was going on in Wanda's head. And 
the more things started to come together when color started showing up and like Jimmy Woo was exploring things and we see the uh, the outside of the world that they were living in is normal and they're trying to figure out what's going on. What is Wanda doing? And like, we know Vision's dead, but why is he there? It, it got like weird. It was really intriguing to see that Wanda was dealing with her grief of Vision's loss by creating a whole freaking world, like a, a, not a world, but a whole town of these people. And like, but she trapped all these people, controlled them to live out this life. And uh, it was like so cool, so different, especially because this is the first thing that the MCU really tried to be very different in, I, I'd say. And uh, it was definitely um, a, a good show. I think that it was uh, a lot of fun, like I said, in, in the sitcom nature of it and stuff. And like Wanda and Vision's relationship was explored really well. Wanda's take on grief was uh, mainly different than how, say, you know, this person would or that person would. Everyone deals with grief differently. I think that's a main lesson of the show. And WandaVision explored that really well. And uh, I think that it goes to show you that, you know, Marvel could branch out and do some different kind of stories here. Wanda is a really important character. It looks like uh, we're going to see that in the multiverse of madness. I'm really excited for that. Um, Agatha was, uh, was an enjoyable villain. I liked her. It was Agatha all along. There was a lot of good stuff in there. I really liked uh, Wanda and Vision's kids and the, their dynamic as well. Uh, On-screen chemistry was just a lot of fun between the family. Uh, a lot of questions, you know, like wh how, how did she create this? And then more importantly, like where is she going next? She's trying to find her kids because they seem to exist somewhere in the multiverse. She became the Scarlet Witch. It was really cool. Um, there was some pretty good action with the Vision versus Vision and stuff and then Wanda versus Agatha. Uh, I think that um, the Quicksilver cameo was fun uh, until the joke. Not that I didn't, uh, I, I, I was disappointed by the joke, but um, maybe, maybe that Quicksilver really does exist somewhere. I mean, WandaVision was fresh. It was a lot of fun and it, it told a good story about grief and stuff. And um, it's exploring some really interesting concepts in the MCU. So I thought it was really good. Now, as you can see, I'm left with just Hawkeye at number one. This most recent show just ended. I would say probably the most grounded, the most simple. It wasn't connected to a lot of other things too deeply. I mean, obviously it was connected to multiple storylines in the MCU, but like it wasn't relying on too much. It didn't feel like an earth shattering story and that made it all, all the better. I'd argue that um, sometimes less is more and Hawkeye actually went out of the way to give us some really cool stuff that like connected to the better part, the you know, bigger parts of the MCU, but it also kept a pretty low profile and just a story about, you know, about Clint and about Kate and I think it was just a really good vibe. It was a really good time. I really liked Hawkeye. I've always liked Jeremy Renner as Clint Barton and I've always understood why he's kind of just like a almost a throwaway compared to a lot of the other Avengers because they're all super powered and this and that. And he's a normal guy who shoots bows and arrows and he's admitted that, but he's always fought his way through it all. He's always been a core part of the team. Uh, I think even his wife had said once that like the fact that the Avengers do need him is even scarier, you know what I mean? He is a normal guy, but he's a hero. He's a really cool hero. And he realistically didn't want to get Kate involved, but she's young, she's excited, she's interested. She was inspired by Hawkeye watching him fight the Chitauri in, you know, in 2012. Really cool way to show that perspective there, right? In the beginning of the show. Kate Bishop, I think, uh, delightful character. I really like Haley Steinfeld in this role. I think that she's just very fun. She's got a good energy. She's young, she's naive, but she wants to be heroic. She wants to be better than she ever has been because she's been inspired and like she's lost things, you know, and she wants to get down to the truth. And she does the right thing by getting her mom arrested in the end. I think Kate learned a lot about herself. She's a really likable character. She evolves a lot through only six episodes. She grows and I guess she's the next Hawkeye. Clint is going through the grief of Natasha. That's a main part of the story. And I think it, I really like that Hawkeye, the series, is kind of about Black Widow and, you know, especially once we see Yelena come in, which I, I was like very excited to see Yelena because I knew she was on the way. Once she found out about Clint, you know, at the ending of Black Widow in the post credit scene by Val. Um, so I was really looking forward to seeing her on here. And wow, like that scene when she was talking to Kate and eating the mac and cheese was just hilarious. I think that Florence Pugh just delivered, like her delivery was just so much fun. It was just, it was, I, I was laughing, like it was a really good scene. 
And they actually have a really good on-screen chemistry as well, Haley Steinfeld and Florence Pugh. So I would love to see more of Kate and Yelena together. I feel like we could too, especially because effectively they're the next Black Widow and the next Hawkeye, you know what I mean? I love this character. Like, I'm so glad we got her as a main part of the show because I thought she was really good in Black Widow and, you know, it's fitting to give us more. And uh, it makes sense that a Hawkeye would be about Black Widow without her being there, you know? Clint, uh, really very realistic character, going through grief, going through a lot. He lost his hearing from all the crazy stuff he's been through as an Avenger. He wants to meet his family on Christmas. A lot of emotional moments in there. I really think they did a good job at telling a story about him, trying to just get back to being with his family, but trying to sort of uh, burn the past, quite literally, obviously, with the Ronin suit, you know? The whole exploration of grief uh, in the MCU post Endgame has been really good. Not unlike WandaVision, Hawkeye does a really good job at showing a different perspective on how someone is grieving. Uh, we see just a really fun dynamic duo here with Clint and Kate. I, I enjoyed that. The MCU clearly likes doing their duos, uh, a lot of these shows, right? So I hope that kind of trend con will continue because uh, it was executed super well in Hawkeye. It was a good Christmas vibe. You know, I'm recording this uh, day before Christmas Eve, right? So the show just ended yesterday and uh, Hawkeye, it, it made you feel Feel like that Christmas feeling uh, right when the first trailer dropped it was like oh this is like die hard almost you know what I mean they did a good job with that feeling of uh, the holiday spirit and just the settings in the show and the scenes and everything the music just everything going around uh, also you know having Wilson Fisk show up uh, played by Vincent D'Onofrio from Daredevil was really exciting I think he's such a badass and so cool on screen uh, I wanted more of him and uh, I mean hey who knows if he could really be dead, right? Uh, it was like sort of just a fun show. I mean, it was good energy and I really am excited to see more of Kate Bishop. I hope we get to see her more in the MCU. Same with Yelena and yeah, Hawkeye. Uh, just a, a good story and a good vibe, good Christmas energy there. Uh, all right, so it's going to wrap it up for me, guys. That's my list, my ranking of the five MCU Disney Plus shows that came out in 2021. Been a fun year for the MCU. We got four films and five series. Uh, I'm really excited for the future. I think there's going to be a lot of Disney Plus shows coming that are going to tell all sorts of stories and for Marvel. So we're going to have lots more lists on the way. All right. I appreciate your time here. Always thank you so much for watching, guys. Let me know your list, your ranking of the MCU shows on Disney Plus in the comments below. And I'll see you guys all in the next video.